Back in the days when we used to shoot in film, somebody accidentally processed a film in a chemical solution intended for some other type of film. And surprisingly, it created some interesting effects, which resulted in the birth of cross-processing. Today, cross-processing or stylizing is modifying the highlights, shadows and midtones and adding some colors to it. Today, we're going to learn three amazing ways to stylize your photos in Photoshop. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and if you want to download any photo used in this video, make sure to download them using the links in the description. So the first way that we're going to talk about is curves. Now, curves is one of the most advanced ways to do it and therefore it is difficult. But at the same time, it is also efficient and the most common way to do it. There is nothing within stylizing that curves cannot do. It's the best, but it requires some skills and some practice. So first of all, let's go ahead and create a curves adjustment layer. Click on this gray white icon, circle one and choose curves. Okay. So we have the background image and above that we have curves. Let's bring curves here so that you can see what exactly is happening. Let's just stick it in here and make it a little smaller. Let's zoom into his face and have a look. All right. So first of all, let's understand what's happening in this curves properties. So once you have the curves properties open, if you cannot see it, just double click on it and you'll be able to see the properties. Now, this is histogram. You see this graph? This is histogram. On the horizontal axis or the X axis, you have different brightness levels. On the Y axis or the vertical axis, you have number of pixels. So as you can see in this image, so many pixels are black and therefore the number of pixel is so high for this brightness level, which means for this dark area. So on the left, the dark areas are represented. On the right, the bright areas are represented. In the middle, the midtones are represented. As you can see, for the dark areas, there are so many pixels. So this is the brightness level. This is the number of pixels. Okay. So from left to right, the brightness level increases from bottom to top. The number of pixels increases. Just simple maths. So for this area, we have this many pixels. For this area, we have this many pixels and we have so less highlights. Therefore, for the bright areas, we have so little pixels. Okay, so if you want to make the bright areas brighter, what would you do? You would click a point on the right because the bright brightness level is on the right. Okay, click on that. And if you want to increase the number of pixels, then drag it to the top. This way you make the bright areas brighter. What did we do? Just a quick recap. We wanted to make the bright areas brighter. So we would select and make a point on the right. Okay. To make that brighter, we would increase the number of pixels in the bright areas. And to increase the number of pixels, what do we do? Drag it up. Okay. If you want to make the dark areas darker, click a point here and drag it down. It's just like that. You understood the theory? Now let's bring it to practice. If you want to create a faded effect, which means that in the shadows, you have a little brightness. So what do you do? You drag it a little up and you get that kind of an effect. Now you can bring it a little down to create. Okay. Now you want to highlight, add some highlights just like that. And that's it. So have a look, quick look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after creates that amazing cross processing effect. Now, if you want to add colors to it, this has different channels. Click on this and you can choose red, green or blue. Let's choose reds first. And for example, if you want the highlights, bright areas to have reds, what do you do? Click on the right hand side because on the right hand side, what do we have? The bright areas. Now this is the graph for just the red pixels. So we would click here and drag it up. We don't want red pixels on the dark area. So we would drag it down just like that. And maybe drag it even more down. Now, if you drag it down below this diagonal, what do you get? The opposite of red. And what is the opposite of red? Cyan. Just remember, opposite of RGB is CMY, opposite of R is C, opposite of G is M and opposite of B is Y. Blue, yellow, green, magenta, red, cyan. Just like that. Decrease it. Wow. It looks fantastic. Okay. Now you can come to blues and maybe increase the blues in the shadows just like that. 
and give a little bit of yellow tint just like that and you can play with the greens decrease the green to see how it looks maybe i will decrease the greens in the highlights and increase the greens in the shadows just a little bit so just a little bit of effect here and there let's just close the properties have a better look at it so so this is the before plain flat this is the after really nice effect now you can go ahead now this is non-destructive this is an adjustment layer you can always double click on this open up the properties and make any changes you want if you want to make it a little darker you can do that i want to make this a little just like that you can do anything you want before after so that was number one way of stylizing your images or cross processing and that is using curves so Curves is very simple. On the X axis, you have different brightness levels. On the Y axis, you have number of pixels. If you want to increase the amount of reds in the highlights, pick the point on the right, drag it up to increase it, drag it down to decrease the reds, which means increasing the cyan's. Okay. If you want to add some blues, increase the blues. If you want to add some yellows, decrease the blues. Why? Because yellow is the opposite of blues. So that's how it works. This brings us to the second way. And the second way is a little easier. Okay, but it doesn't have so much of a control as curves. So let's go ahead and delete the curves. And this time, the second way is by using the levels adjustment layer. Okay, click on this gray white icon again and choose levels. Now levels are very similar to curves. Let me show you how is it similar. Okay, let's create a curves adjustment layer just for fun, just for demonstration purposes. Now, bring out the properties here. Now have a look, have a close look at what's happening to the photo. Let's tuck it in here and move it just right there so that you can see what exactly is happening. Now, we are in the curves right now, curves properties. If you move this point all the way down, it becomes black, right? What this point does is that it makes the bright areas darker, okay? It's making the bright areas darker. If you bring it all the way down, it makes it black. This point makes the dark areas brighter so white okay got that we moved it vertically it makes the images black or white now have a look at the levels properties look at these two sliders at the bottom they do pretty much exactly the same thing move it to the left makes the bright areas darker move it all the way to the left it makes it black move this all the way to the right it makes it white it's the same thing the ends of the curve moving vertically okay now have a look at these three sliders let's come back to the curves and if we move this slider this two sliders as you can see if we move this to the left it makes dark things darker it makes bright things brighter it's the same in levels dark things darker bright things brighter it's doing exactly the same thing now what does this stand for okay now you might say most of you might say if we take this to the left it makes it brighter it should make it darker, but why is it making it brighter? If you take this to the right, it makes it darker. Opposite is happening. Now this is the mid-tone slider. Let's bring it to one. Let's come back to curves. Have a look. If you pick a point in the middle, take it to the left, it will make it brighter. If you take it to the right, it will make it darker. And that's exactly what's happening there. So it's very similar, just a simplified form of curves. Okay, it also has three channels and that's exactly how it works. So let's come back to levels. Let's delete the curves. Now, this makes, just a quick recap, this makes the dark areas brighter, this makes the bright areas darker, this makes the dark areas darker, this makes the bright areas brighter, and this controls the midtones. So first of all, let's go ahead and make the dark areas a little brighter and let's make the dark areas a little darker and then a little brighter, control it, Maybe I'll make the light areas. Okay, there we go. Now let's come to reds. We'll do the exact same thing there. Okay, now you can just, it's a much more simplified form and does give you very good results quickly. You don't have to fiddle with the curves and play with the different stuff. Just play with these ladders and you'll be good. Okay, just like that. And you pretty much have added the reds and then the blues. So if you wanna add the blues, you use this slider because this slider moves the two points vertically, remember? So add blues in the shadows, just like that. If you want to add yellows, this slider to the shadows, you want to add yellows to the highlights, then I guess this is the slider, okay? You'll understand this once you mash it with curves. 
very easily just play with the sliders don't think about what's doing what just play with the sliders see what's happening and it will look nice so that's it have a look before after let's just close the properties let me show you one other thing similarly you can use levels in various ways in this example let's just go ahead create the levels first of all let's go ahead and delete the details okay in the shadows we want to delete the details and then make it brighter okay so totally eats up the details and then you make it a little brighter to add a little effect and that is an effect in itself now you can do whatever you want you want to go to add some blues in the shadows there it is maybe you want to delete some details and then add some blues whatever you want just play with the sliders don't think about which slider is doing what it's good to have a knowledge of that but you can just simply play with those and add some retro effects some blues maybe add some yellows to the highlights and before after just play with the sliders and that's pretty much it and this brings us to the third way and the third way is kind of unconventional way but does it really quickly and does exactly what you want very easily you don't have to fiddle with sliders you don't have to think about which slider does what and which slider brings out which color it has everything given and that is the selective color adjustment layer so let's go ahead and delete the levels and let me open another example so i guess this is the example that we were we will be doing for this okay so in this example as you can see i have just actually moved this photo right there let me just bring it to the middle and close this okay in this example let's add a selective color adjustment layer. click on this and choose selective color and in the selective color, you don't have to mess with reds, yellows, greens, cyans, blues, magentas because stylizing is what? It's modifying the highlights, shadows and midtones. What do these do? These modify the reds, these modify the yellows and these are actually the targets. Whatever there is in colors, for example, if you choose reds, all these sliders will do is add or subtract cyan, magenta, yellow and black from the red areas of the photo okay so these are just the targets so first off we're gonna choose white so white is what the highlights so what color do you want in the highlights you can easily introduce that okay so if you want highlights to be a little more red ish so there's no red slider but there's cyan and cyan is the opposite of red if you decrease the cyan you will introduce what red so let's go ahead and decrease the cyan look at how it looks doesn't make much of a difference have a look at here doesn't make much of a difference because I think the highlights are completely white. Now let's increase a little bit of blacks and make the highlights a little darker. Yes, now you can see it because the highlights were completely black. If you just increase a little bit, now you can see the reds introduced there. Okay, now seance the reds. Okay, you get the idea. Now, if you want the dark areas, the shadows to have a little bit of blue or green or whatever color you want, the effect that you see time and again on posted on Facebook or Flickr or Instagram, Go to the blacks. If you want to introduce a little bit of blue, you have the yellow slider and blue is the opposite of yellow. Just decrease it and you have it. It's so simple. You don't have to worry about the curves, the slider or anything. If you want to introduce the blues, just select the blacks and bring down the yellow. If you want to introduce magenta, just increase it. And that's pretty much it. If you want to make the shadows a little brighter as we did there, the matte effect or the fade effect, just decrease the blacks and it becomes a little brighter very easy to do then you can play with the midtones you can go to the midtones you can introduce different colors there maybe add a little bit yellow tint to it and make maybe make the blacks a little darker i will i'll do that and introduce yellow uh, blue and just play with it and you'll be fine so this is one of the ways a lot of colors there cyan magenta yellow opposite of this red green and blue and just sliders very easy also you can try choosing relative relative is a little subtle absolute is a little harsh so relative if you want and then you can play with the values so i would first off let's go ahead and reset that let's do that again and first off what i would do let's bring it here let's start with the blacks actually black is the one that we start with you want to make the blacks a little brighter just like that and then add a little bit of blue to it like that maybe play with the different sliders play with the different sliders look at what's happening okay just wow then come to the neutrals then play with the neutral slider and then very easy way to st stylize just play that's what you have to do okay so before 
after do whatever you want with it so let's look at one last example and we will be through let's see whether we can just uh, okay so I've already done it so you don't have to worry about it so in this example I actually used curves so this was grayscale completely black and white image now using curves I have just added colors have a look and this was looking funky so I added some text funk now let me show you the curves actually so it's kind of a very modified curves right here so if you look at different channels reds I have added some reds in the highlights and then if you move to green there's some birds chirping outside sorry about that they're just having a good time and I've increased the green as you can see and then the blues decrease the blues increase the blues in the shadows that's pretty much it RGB brighten up the highlights and added the funk layer isn't it funky so that's how we stylize our images or do cross-processing in Photoshop just remember the three ways number one curves number two levels and number three selective color now curves is the most advanced way of doing cross-processing or stylizing you can do anything in curves now you can do such thing in curves which levels cannot do and selective colors cannot do but it requires some skills some practice okay you have to think about which point will do what which is what what are brightness levels what are axis and all those stuff but if you master curves there's nothing else you will ever have to do number two levels just play with the sliders okay you still have to understand which slider does what and the best way to understand levels is to match it with curves as we did in the tutorials okay and the third way is the easiest selective color you already have all the sliders with colors named on it so if you just want a quick retouch quick stylizing just if you want to add blue to the shadows drag the yellows to the left in the blacks and you're pretty much done i hope you enjoyed this video and if you did make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss anything i'll see you guys in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating i would like to thank all these nice people for making this episode possible and helping keep pix imperfect free for everybody forever thank you so much guys and if you want to support the channel check the link in the description thanks for watching